Welcome, Welcome to, to the Father Focus Podcast. Father Focus. Check, check. Why are we talking about this? Why does it matter? Why does it matter? So shaping your kids into powerful people. Bro, let that brother yeah. fly. Yeah, check, check. All right, let's ready, go. Ready? All right, let's go. Let's go. That was awesome. What's up, everybody? We are back. What up, what up? I know you missed us, <laughs> but don't worry. We are back again yes. to fill your week with wisdom, skill, swag, all things related to awesomeness. That's, That's what right. we bring to the table. Um, all things related all things to You're awesomeness. welcome. <laughs> I love that. You're welcome. Everything <laughs> is awesome. My man's your main. We're doing it. We're doing it. Um, we really hope you guys have been enjoying the season. Uh, season two, if you kind of just join us now, missed it. This whole season is about manhood. So, um, we'd encourage you, man, lean in. We feel like this is like critical information for you as a man, share it with other men. I think men need courage, especially right now in the culture. Um, and so share this with people like subscribe, follow us on podcast platforms, YouTube. Um, we'd also love feedback as well. So what we're going to talk about today, um, it, kind of the concept that I, that I, I want to like frame this in is if we could say here are non-negotiable qualities that a man needs. Like these aren't like, ah, oh, these are nice to have. Oh, if you could get these, maybe it'd help you out. Like you, you definitively need these as the foundation of who you are as a man. Like the best qualities and most important qualities. If you were to say, what is a great man? He has to have these things. That's what I want to talk about today. Yeah. Right? Because I think there's all these voices saying, oh, here's what it means to be a great man. Here's what you need. All these things. But I think what we all feel strongly about is there are intangible qualities that are actually the most important. It's not how much money you have in the bank, how big your house is, how nice your cars are. Even though those things are great, there's intangible qualities that you need to be a great man that are the foundation of any man who's been great in history. Um, And so we kind of want to talk about that today. Um, if you have thoughts about this, comment on social media. We'd love to hear your thoughts about what you feel like are those essential qualities for manhood. But we're going to kind of jump into that. So, could German- we even say could we even say basic qualities right. yeah. of a good man? Yeah. Like something oh, along. But I like yes. superlatives. You know that make it sound yeah. really, really special <laughs> okay, and exciting. Okay. But yes, basic in the sense of ne- necessary. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's almost like it. in a certain sense. Yeah. Uh, if you don't have these, you're not a man. Yeah, in a okay. sense. I, I, I mean, a man yes. of substance, a man That's of significance. Right. Yeah, yes. interesting. These All are right. qualities to reach right. for. Okay, so here's what I'm at. Here's what I'm gonna frame. I'm gonna ask you guys. Okay. Build me the perfect man. The sense of what qualities are non-negotiable oh, in your mind that a man has to have. And if if a man doesn't have these, he needs to strive towards these things, right? Like, That's right. like these are not things that you're like, ah, eh, maybe. Like you gotta have it. So. Give me your list. Give me like three things that for you are non-negotiable. Okay. First, I'd say like responsibility, right? Okay. So a man is responsible. So yeah. um, he's responsible for his world, his sphere of influence. And yeah. even at times, not only his sphere and his world, but even others, right? W- w- other mm. people's worlds are like, for example, um, as a father, I'm responsible for my home. I take responsibility. The lead, I'm the lead server. I'm going to repent first. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to initiate um, things of, of, of uh, encouragement. That's and, good. And, and things like that. Yeah. So I think responsibility is a big one. We see that even in we said before another podcast in Genesis, we see the first call for man is to be responsible. Yeah. And even after man, even when a man falls and a man fails, we too take responsibility. Yeah, and we own it. We, we 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 repent of it, right? We get right and we get back up and we keep moving That's forward. Good. So, what yeah, else responsibility. I so responsibility would be first. Okay. I think um, a men are strong, right? And I know that seems like a taboo word to say to some people, some groups like men. Not are in this podcast. <laughs> That's not. right. Well, you know what I mean. Like, there's this. Yeah. We talked about it before. There's this. Um, we say strong men. It's almost deemed like that we're going to use our strength to harm right. versus like strong men uh, like use their strength to help others, yeah. right? They're, they realize that their strength has been given to them. It's a gift and they leverage that strength to help other people. They protect the weak, for example. They help women and children that we use our strength in a way to help others. We don't use our strength in a, in a way to um, to help just be selfish or self-seeking. Right. It's almost interesting, like I remember in... Um, 
the Captain America, the first one. You guys have ever seen the Captain America, the yeah, first one? Yeah, of uh-huh. course. The, remember, <laughs> it's the original, right? Who hasn't? Well, some people, you know, I don't know. We want to slap him. Well, he, I think you're a DC guy. Aren't you no, a DC Batman's guy? Batman's my favorite superhero, okay, so thought, but I've okay, seen all I'm the sorry. Marvel films. Is he really? Yeah. Uh, How have we not discussed this? Yeah, he's a DC guy. No, I'm not a DC guy. I only like Batman. The why? Superman movies why are do you lame. Like, why do you like Batman? The Superman movies are not all lame, yeah. but mostly. The reason we're definitely going down a rabbit hole. Oh, it's okay. Right it's now. a good rabbit hole. This is amazing. So podcast. here's well, why just... I love Batman. He's the only superhero, in my opinion, who can really exist. Like okay. there is the possibility that Batman could be real. Okay. Right. There's a billionaire. Rich, there's a billionaire out there he's smart. that has all the skills. Isn't that Elon talents, Musk? Talents, inventions. Maybe. Who knows? <laughs> right. Maybe he'll be Batman one day. <laughs> so I think for me, I like. I like the realistic aspect okay. of Batman. Okay. And I and I feel like there's times in life where I'm like, we need a freaking superhero <laughs> right now to take some <laughs> of these real people one. out. So maybe oh, Batman man. will show up one day I got and you. do the things that no one else can do. Yeah. But he's also legit. I get it. You yeah. know. Um that is e- equal to Iron Man. Also okay. a real guy. Iron Man isn't realistic in the world we live in today. Okay. But there I'm are, just saying he is a he is a real man, rich like Batman. I mean, Batman, he's, his, his uh, uniform, whatever you call that, suit blocks, you know, bullets and blades. You know, he's got gadgets. You know, there is a thing called body the armor. Batmobile. Okay. Anyway, yes, we did derail. I apologize. It's all right. I was a little shocked. It's all, all right. So the last thing you were cooler. saying is a is strong, protect strength, the weak. Yes. Yeah. Strong, right? So in, in the movie I was mentioning, you know, there's a time. There's a scene where he's been chosen. Right, he's done everything he can to Captain be chosen. America. Right, yeah. Steve yeah. Rogers wants to join the army, military. He's too small. Right, he's too frail. He's too weak. He's, you know, he's, you know, everything about him is like not a soldier, right. not a candidate, not even close. But in there, you continue Except to see for one thing. What's that? His heart. His heart. So, so he's continually trying. Well, the scientist decides, hey, comes up with the serum to make this super soldier. Oh, okay. And they're trying to. They're picking. Who they're going to choose? You remember the movie? They pick him as as a super soldier. He's chosen. He asks the question. He's like, "Why me?" And and I'm I'm butchering it, but he par- the paraphrase is because strong men who've always known strength, they don't know what it's like to be weak. Mm-hmm. They will oftentimes oh, they will use their strength to do more harm than good. Mm-hmm. And so he chooses Steve because you know what it's like to be weak, and you therefore will will, will use your strength to help the weak. That's strong. Good. Strong men help the weak. They use their strength to help others. Yeah. So that was the point. That's good. Yeah. That's man. good. All right. All right. So you have responsible. Responsible. They take responsibility. Yes. Right? You talked about strength. Yes. Strong men, not just physically. Right. Right? Inwardly but emotionally. Strong. Yeah. Spiritually. Um, and then you talked about protecting the weak. I think that's a great list. What do you got, Jeremy? Yeah. I mean, obviously... You know, being a pastor, being a Christian first, uh, obviously, I, I think I would say godliness um, okay. would be the first thing. If I, if, you know, externally, um, things that are particularly masculine, yeah. uh, I think I may say uh, courage. Uh, courage would be one. Um, courage in what sense? Uh I would think in every sense of the term, courage to, uh, as we've said in uh, past podcast, courage to lead your family, mm. courage when you're after you're finished, friends of working long hour shifts, um, going home and having the courage uh, to take up your role as a father in the home okay. and going and working h- longer and harder hours. Um, sure. At home, uh, courage to lead your family in prayer, and then I know sometimes for some guys that's very hard. So to be mm-hmm. to be courageous with yeah. opening the Bible that you may know nothing about and teaching them. Maybe your mm-hmm. dad's taught you nothing about money, and that's something that may be a, a little bit intimidating for you to get off in the world of money with your kids. Courage to lead your wives out of uh, maybe things that they're facing. Courage to so I think courage in every aspect. Um, courageous about maybe new business opportunities, investment properties, reprioritizing things, reprioritizing things. Yeah. So basically a man who faces his fears goes after things that are uncomfortable. That's right. Like doesn't run from what's difficult, challenging, makes him feel afraid. Right. I I, I think um, 
Now, who needs courage if um, we're not afraid of anything? Right. You know, courage is not the absence of fear, as we heard. It is the ability to work in the middle of fear. It is being able to go forward when you don't know all of the outcomes of a peculiar situation, the particulars of that, you know, you and your world uh, know and um, are acquainted with. Uh, and still be able to advance forward to a particular goal, sure. a mission. You have an objective, and to be able to go forward and uh, achieve certain things. So I think courage would be a, a one. Um, two others I would probably lean on is uh, if I, just to give them both to you. I think weight and wisdom. Um, Define weight. Yeah. So um, glory. <laughs> Uh, Germain means it has to do with weight. It has to do with a certain level of awe, honor, respect. When, 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 when the man, right? I'll use the definite article there. When the man walks in the room and everybody knows, um, and he carries himself in a different way. Yeah. He captures the energy of the room. We, you know, when someone walks like an in, alpha male, basically, yeah, right? but, that could be an example. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, but not even because I've seen alpha males who are just loud and obnoxious and it, it doesn't necessarily have to be, but maybe, uh, maybe a man who just has a, a particular kind of authority yeah. to his, uh, to his character, to his presence. He's literally carrying a weight. So I know that. As a man in my house, I have, you know, five young kids, my wife, I come home and there are times, Jermaine, that our houses get, a, it's a little rowdy and I like it like that. My house is lively. Uh, okay. We have, there's, you know, energy, there's fun, there's competition. My kids are creative. And there have been times when my wife, who is smaller than me, uh, does not have as deep of a voice as I do. Uh, she doesn't command, like literally, I'm, I'm, I think I said that, but I'm physically bigger. Um, I'm more aggressive. I'm louder in every possible physical way. When I walk in, uh, I command a certain level sure. of, 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 uh, of weight, of, of honor and respect as their dad. Yeah. And I, I get attention very easily when I walk in my home. And I give it. I would say that too. So they, my kids know when I walk in, it's like, hey, games on, play. But then also when it's time to work, they know it's time to work. So I would say, you know, of course, courage. I said that. Uh, weight, a sense. They're, literally, I think that men who boys and young um, men want to follow are men who carry themselves in a powerful way. Yeah. They are men, all, and all the things we're talking yes. about maybe is yeah. summed up in the word weight, yeah. maybe. Uh, a certain level of, of glory. And, you know, in Isaiah, you know, um, you know this famous uh, 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 vision that Isaiah has, this, um, you know, it says, holy, 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 the whole earth is filled with his glory. Everybody knows it. Um the glory of God is weight, but the glory of God is the character of God. It's the holiness of God that's being personified. Mm. It's being expressed. So I think that when we talk about the weight of a man or his, like these characteristics, it's something that's being that oozes out of him, not by force, but by a life and a legacy that's been built. And it's, and it just comes out in in these moments. And so maybe a level of seriousness, but not always taking themselves too serious. Maybe it is being able to be humorous, but not always being overly silly. Um, and then the last one, like I said, is, is wisdom. Yeah. Uh, that, um, we said in, in a few episodes ago, um, or maybe it was just our discussions because we talk about this off camera a lot as well, but uh, Doug Wilson said the, um, the goal of boyhood is manhood. And we are yeah. striving uh, to, to teach our children right. to become responsible adults, godly right. adults, and right. we're going to contribute to society. And wisdom is the application of all that knowledge. Right. And, and, and the, the, the old, the, the man, particularly the old man should be a 
a plethora. He should be a storehouse of wisdom that yeah. young men come to his feet, sit at his feet, and they learn from him. And that should be the goal of men. The man um, should be a man who has wisdom readily uh, at his fingertips, yeah. at his disposal, because he is contemplative. He is reasonable. He's rational. He sees the world as God created it. He's able to function in that world. And... Um, and he applies everything that he knows in a way that brings uh, a certain kind of quality of life, vitality, uh, and grace uh, yeah. everywhere he goes. So again, I guess my answer to the question, the characteristics that I see, and again, not exclusively, but uh, courage, weight, and wisdom. Yeah, that's good. I love it. Um, I think for me, um, I think... One thing that I was raised in that was extremely critical in my household um, was that you worked hard. Yeah. Like, yep. like you didn't sit around and just play all the time, even though we did that. But there was an expectation that like you used what you had to build something. Whatever you did, you did it with your whole heart, your body, your effort, your energy, your strength. And, uh, that's kind of carried me through my life. You know, like when I turned 18, I don't know how it was for you guys, but my parents were like, Hey, we love you. You're a man, figure it out. So like, so when I moved to Dallas, (laughs) yeah, it was on me. It was on me. Like to make my way through Bible school wasn't like my parents were like, Hey, we're going to help you pay you. Like, it was like, you're going to pay for it yourself. But they had given me a foundation, a value for work. I worked full time. Me and Jeremy worked together at animal hospital, uh, when we were in high school. Yeah. Um, as soon as I get a job, I got a job and I worked pretty much like 30, 40 hours a week all through high school, like when I could, because that was a value my parents had for me. And I think I'm emphasizing this specifically because I feel like that's a value that's been lost. Mm. I personally feel like that. I don't know if that's been your experience, yeah, but I see an avoidance of work or that work is something to do the minimum, not the maximum. Oh my it goodness. almost seems like it's a negative thing, Dude, not a positive that, thing. That's good. But then you think about like past <laughs> generations, like think about what a farmer had to do to earn a living yeah. for his family. Sun up to sun down, man. Like, right. and it wasn't like, oh, I'm going to do this three months out of the year and then take a vacation. Like it was like, I'm going to grind my life away for something. And I think we've lost that value as a society, but specifically, I feel like not that women aren't called to work hard. Everyone's called to work That's hard. Right. But I think there's something powerful if we talk about it like gener- gener- generationally. There we go. I said it right the third time. <laughs> is that when I see my grandpa and my dad work hard, there's something instilled inside of me that I'm going to pass on to my sons and my grandsons because there's been a model set in our family where we're not going to do the bare minimum. I think it says a lot about a man. I personally don't respect a man if he doesn't take his work seriously. Just me. Like, Mm. that's how I am. Like if if you're a joke and you're like (laughs) just barely getting by and like your, your coworkers and your bosses kind of look at you as like, yeah, we can't trust this guy. He's not reliable. He's not gonna get the job done. That's not a man I respect. Right. I want to be like, I want someone who takes their work seriously and gives everything they got to it. Obviously, there's scriptural basis for that, but I think that's something super critical. Um, Another thing I would say, this is honestly something I'm walking through right now, resigning from my job and moving across the country based on some things me and Christina felt really strongly God spoke to us, is the ability to take risks. Um, I mean, I'm in the riskiest, scariest season of my life personally, but you know, one of the things that's encouraging, I think even you guys have said this to me at different points, your kids are watching the example you're setting. That's right. That's right. Like they're watching me as a father willing to do something that on the surface seems really stupid. Like, to be honest, like I wrestle with like, this seems like a really stupid, irresponsible decision, but I think what, and this wasn't my goal, but I hope what it's teaching my kids is that you should go after things you want, even if it costs you something. Yeah. Like, don't always play it safe. Don't always do what's easy, what's comfortable. Like, take the leap. And that's what this whole season has felt like for me. Like, I am out on the edge of the cliff, like, hoping something's going to happen, and I'm not going to splat on the ground. <laughs> but there's something that happens internally in you when you take risk. And the other piece of that is, when you take a risk, you're going to fail. So, like, 
I think the point I'm trying to make is you need to be reaching for things that you're probably not going to fully grab. Like you're going to fail in trying, but you're going to embrace that and keep going higher. And I think we have a small subset of men who are risk takers and successful and have failed a bunch of times. And then we have all the people sitting on the sideline cheering them on thinking that's not me. That's for them. I think every man is called to take risk to embrace failure and to go after dreams that yeah. he has inside of him. I think that's, I think that's innate inside of us as men. I think we just lost that as society. Um, and then I'd say the third thing that I've always admired about men, there's a lot of men that are successful. There's a lot of men that have built great things in their own name, their own businesses. You know, if you look at sports, like their career, but I think something I've always admired is men who have used their strength, their skill, their talent to teach other men how to be great. Yeah. Wow. Like legacy builders. Mm -hmm. I know that's one of the things you're passionate about, Jermaine, yeah, that we've absolutely. talked about plenty of times. But I think when you look at the sum total of your life, it's not what did I accomplish, but who did I accomplish it with and who did I reproduce myself in? I think that's that good. is so critical. It's not something you probably think so much about when you're young, but as you get older as a man, you think about these things in a different way. Because you're like, it is my responsibility to teach other men the values I've learned. Learn from my mistakes and my failures. So I think those three things for me are critical. I think the whole list is great. Yeah. Um, but I think the hope Dude, in this is like self-evaluation, right? On, on that last point, let me just say one thing. Um, a quote that I heard, I don't, I don't know who said it, but I've just always remembered it. But it says, um, a great man shows his greatness by the way he treats the little men. You know, and it's like just what you were saying. It's one of the things that you, you said you admired. Um, and as fathers particularly, right. fathers who are men, men of men, of future men, uh, we are to instill in them these characteristics and be and and lead them up into, if you will, they're st they're standing on yeah. our shoulders. Yeah. That's the future hope is that we will lift them up. So I, I yeah. really really uh, uh, appreciate that thought, Nathan. All right, let me ask you a follow up question. Okay, which of these lists you can pick any of them? You feel like you struggle with. Oh man. Like it's, it's hard for you or something you're aspiring towards reaching towards. It's not natural for you. It's not easy. Oh man. So what do we have responsibility. Yeah, List them courage, all again. Courage. Yeah. I think I'm actually perfect on all of them. Uh, no. So I'm we should kidding. add a pride to the list. Probably. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Humility. <laughs> um, why, why don't you go first since you asked the question? That's a hard question. Uh, what do I struggle with the most? So we have courage, wisdom, uh, I would say you know, sometimes I feel like a fool. Sometimes I feel like I'm faking it. You know, I'm like, man, what do I do? Like, I really don't sometimes know what to do. And I'm like, what would a wise person do? Like, I'm, <laughs> you know, asking God, you know. Uh, yeah. So I would say maybe wisdom. Courage, wisdom. Uh, may maybe, maybe courage. Maybe there are things that I know I should be doing and stepping out. And uh, it's just intimidating sometimes. Like yeah. Nathan, you know, it, I mean, obviously it was intimidating uh, at some point. Man, I got five kids like what what's gonna happen yeah uh i might struggle with all of them <laughs> yeah, <in some laughs> strong way. i mean my goodness if i go down the list i'm like dude i am the worst <laughs> Seriously, we are not just, qualified to do yeah, this podcast. i am literally yeah. terrible like i'm not strong yeah. inwardly i'm a weak coward i have no wisdom well we know that's not true <laughs> we're, we're gonna kick you off the pot. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no i i i think uh, if i were to overanalyze it i i may say uh, maybe wisdom. Uh, I hope I'm cur I hope I'm courageous, but sometimes I feel like maybe that's a little bit of a struggle. I'm trying to think of the other ones. I do think I work so hard. Courage, protect the weak, protect strong, the weak. Weak. courageous, weighty, wise, build legacy, work hard, take risks, embrace failure. Yeah. Yeah. I think for me, I think I would probably say, Jesus help me I'm lacking wisdom. Uh, sometimes maybe it's all connected in yeah. some crazy way, but maybe lacking wisdom and even cur courage, like, yeah. you know, you know, yeah. build yourself up. Right. Like sometimes I need to do a little bit better job of doing that. Maybe. I don't know. What do you think, Joe? Yeah. I mean, I mean, again, you can, you hear the list. So you think, man, I can struggle in the <laughs> different areas, at different, different times. seasons, different, yeah, different areas right? At, at different times. But I think, um, that's a good question. I think sometimes risk, um, yeah. I struggle with because responsibility is high for me. Yeah. So if you do the strength finders or any kind of test, responsibility is in my top five. So, 
I want to be responsible, like sometimes to a fault. Like when I need to cut things off, I'm committed. You know, mm. I'm a very loyal person, but I'm also principled. So um, in that loyalty. Um, but so, Tremaine is the best of us. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm saying just for me, I, I think, just being honest, like I can struggle with that yeah. because I'm, um, the risk is not that I'm risk avoidant. It's like, I don't, I know the implications of my risk. Like if I, if I do this, I have four children behind me, yeah. right. That are counting and relying yeah. on me. Yep. Right. So how does this affect them? Now to Nathan's point, I'll, I'll do and I'll follow the Lord wherever he leads, but still there's, there's times where I struggle with that risk Absolutely. factor of like, man, if I do this, right. Um, what's the fallout, right? what's the yeah, fallout going yeah, to be, yeah. you know? Um, and so th there's risk at times for sure. And all, of course, wisdom. And I mean, they're, they're all kind of intertwined. Like, right. is there, what's the wis what's the wise thing to do? Sometimes the wise thing to do is to take the risk. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's to forsake it all. Yeah. It's almost like they're, they're attached. There's a thread through a lot yeah, of these. For sure. sure. Yeah. I think for me, I am not good at failing. You guys know that about me because you're my friends. I want everything to be awesome all the time. I have extremely high expectations about everything. And so a lot of times I automatically set myself up for failure because my expectations are way so too high. Unrealistic. unrealistic. Yeah, they're like yeah. impossible. But I hate failing to the point to where literally like I either won't take a risk or I'll drive myself in the ground trying to make sure I get to my expectation level. And I... I know hypothetically that failure is a good teacher. It's probably one of the best teachers. Yeah. But I don't want to fail ever right. at anything. Right. Like in my entire life. Did you ever get an F on a report card? No. Oh. You're a perfectionist? No, I, I don't know if I'm a perfectionist, but I definitely have high expectations for myself where it's like I look at life and I think I want this. I want to achieve that. I want to go after this. And I'm going to figure out a way to do it. Yeah. And I'm very driven by that. So you say you're hard so, on yourself. Well, yeah, I mean, I yeah. think so failure is not in not the, option. it's not in the cards for me. Like I can't <laughs> right. fail. I got to win. I got to succeed. Nathan, have you ever been fired? Uh, yes, I have actually. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I didn't handle it very well. Nope. Um, you actually got me my job back after I got fired. <laughs> when we enough. were very young, yes. 17, 16, 17 yes. years old. He got fired for sleeping in on a Saturday. Yeah. They had to, they made us wake up and be at work at <laughs> seven a.m. on Saturday. Well, it might have been earlier than that, It was bro. like six, yeah, whatever. And we stayed out till two a.m. in the morning. Yeah, we every were, Friday. I was night. always there on time. Yeah. I actually, well, that's because you need like two hours of sleep. Well, You're the funny thing part is, human, is I, part robot. the the day they fired him that we actually needed him. And so this guy Hoyt was like, Jeremy, get Nathan back in here if he wants his job. So he came in, and <laughs> in order to get Nathan there, tell me if I'm lying. In order to get Nathan there, there on Saturdays, I made him either I slept at his house or he slept at my house for to work. Wake him up. He to literally, wake him if up. it wasn't for Jeremy, I definitely wouldn't have had a job. Yeah. yeah. So sorry. Yeah, but I think the failure thing for me has always been like a challenge. Um, but I think this season, honestly, for me that I'm kind of walking in has really taught me. Okay, I'm learning things as I'm stumbling through this that right. I don't think like yep. starting a business and some of the other things. It's like. I think I never feel fully adequate for where I am because no one chooses this season voluntarily. But mm. I think I'm learning right. things yeah. about failure that I probably wouldn't have learned if I would have stayed in my safe spot. You know, so I think Good our stuff, hope, dude. I think our hope with this episode is some self evaluation time for yeah. for men listening and me. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we're all of I us. I need to evaluate these um, things. But it's like, okay, we need to look at ourselves and. Um, do a status report. Like, how are you doing as a man? And Dude, this I isn't... suck at being a man. I think that's what I just figured it out. Goodness. Oh, I'm just kidding. Man. Well, I'm you like, know, we, we figured this is the indirect way to tell you that <laughs> instead of like just coming out and saying it. So I'm glad you caught what we're throwing out. Um, but no, I mean, if you're out there listening, I think it's really important for you to kind of do some self-evaluation and look through this list. We're not saying, right, we're not saying you have to be all these things today or you're not a good man. I think a good man is one who realizes where he falls right. short, right. but he also has aspirations to continue to grow. Like that's what a good man is. He's aspiring to be better today than he was yesterday. And he's working towards those things. So I don't know if you guys have any final thoughts. I'm going to kind of, after you guys are done, I'm going to kind of just go through the list one more time and then just kind of give them a final word. But like any closing thoughts? No, I think it's good. I think, uh, again, none of us are perfect. You know, we look right, at this yeah. list. You know, we're taking self-evaluating. 
we're self-evaluating ourselves, taking self-evaluation. And I think, again, none of us are perfect, right? like you said, and, and we all have struggles in different seasons and different times with different, you know, aspects of this list. Yeah. So we're human. So if you're out there and you hear the list, you're like, man, I'm like, I'm struggling. Like, I don't know if I'm, I quite hit any of those on the list or I struggle here. Um, we just want, we, we want you to be encouraged. We don't yeah. want you to be you discouraged. Got this for sure. Yeah. Start somewhere. Right. right? Um, and so I want to make sure that people, our listeners are, are getting that from us, um, that you can do it right. You, you can be responsible no matter where you are on the list. You can do it. So be encouraged. That's good. Um, we're all in this together. So Jay. Yeah. Um, where you are now is, uh, you're, you're, you're you haven't arrived and so I, if I know anything about the nature of God and how he has, he is raising us up, we are constantly being sharpened. Um, we're growing. Yeah, we're right. growing. Um, wherever you are, there is absolute room for improvement uh, to stretch ourselves. And God has a way of refining us uh, to make us like him. Absolutely. And uh, I, I just really think that we have to have the mentality of it not merely waiting on God uh, in a certain sense, right. but to be aggressive. Yeah, pa- don't be men, passive. Yes, don't be passive. Yeah. Go and learn something. Go yeah. and win. Become a man. Be 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 strong. Be courageous. As it says in what, 1 Corinthians 16, 13. Like, listen, act like men. And a yes. man is an aggressor. He goes forward. He guards. He's vigilant. And he uses wisdom as a as a as a as a tool, and so all the things that we discussed. What I would say is, um, be good at playing the game, if I can say it like yeah. that. Win, win at being yeah. a man. That's yeah. what get I would on say. the field. Yeah. And if there's something that you struggle with on this list, maybe there's one thing I want to encourage you in is that find someone. Maybe that you're yeah, not good mentor. at something. Yeah, find someone. It could be a friend that they're good at something on this right, list. Right. Jeremy's good at this. Nathan's good at that. So I find someone that has strengths that I don't have and I learn right, from yep, them. Yep. I invite them into my life to help me grow or become strong in this yeah, particular yeah, area. That's good. All right, so we're going to go through the list one more time, kind of take a status report, take risk and embrace failure. I think this has a lot to do with going after your dreams. Yeah. I think living outside of the nine to five box, like pursuing what is in your heart to do, Work hard. Give whatever you put your hands to, everything you got. That's it. Every day. Build legacy. Who are you reproducing in yourself? Like, you can't change the world, but, man, you can change your family, change your sons and your daughters, people in your church that are younger than you. Find someone to pour what you've learned into. Um, Responsibility. Take responsibility. I think we've talked about this at length. It's like if it's in your sphere of influence, if you can reach towards it and you have an impact on it, then it's your responsibility to make it better. Protect the weak. We didn't go into this too deeply, but we all believe inherently that men are called to protect those that are vulnerable. That's like right. that is a calling from That's God right. on our yes. life. Uh, courageous, right? Like run at your fears. Yeah. Weighty. I think what Jeremy was talking about, the substance of a man, that you have something of significance when you walk in a room, people recognize this isn't a weak, frail, insignificant man. This man carries something that I want in my life. I want to be around him. I want to be like him, right? And you don't have to tell people about the weight. It's just there. It's there, right. And the last one is wisdom, um, which we're thankful for, right, that uh, Proverbs tells us. I think it's Proverbs. I could be wrong in that reference, but it says if anyone lacks wisdom, ask of God. I'm pretty James, sure that's James. James. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but he's but yeah, yeah, you know, right. it's all in the Bible somewhere. Right. You know, <laughs> in the but yeah. um, but so take a take a uh, a mental checklist in your mind. Where are you struggling? Yes. Strengthen those areas. Where are you succeeding? Reproduce those in someone else and continue to be that was that first Corinthians 13. You said man. Uh, 16, act, 13. 16. Yeah, act be strong. like yep. Man, men. Act yeah. like Let's men. act like men. Let's be awesome. Let's go kill it. You guys got this. We appreciate you guys and yeah. hope you feel encouraged. So as always, we're going to ask you guys as we wrap up, if you haven't subscribed to this podcast, it really helps Please. us. Yes. Click a simple button, a plus, a follow, yeah. yes. a subscribe button. It doesn't take long. It really helps us. Um, and uh, as always, please, please share this season with other men. Let's encourage each other. Let's be men that build other men up. You guys are amazing. Go kill it today. And we will see you guys in the next episode of the father of focus. Peace. Be man.